I make work out of um, human remains. I make it out of the uh, uh, ashes and bones from people that are left at funeral homes for one reason or the other. I started painting when I was 34 years old. I never had done any art before then. Uh, but for reasons I don't understand, I had an epiphany uh, to become an artist, and I had no experience with this kind of thing. Uh, so I just began to draw and paint uh, by day by day by day. I uh, didn't really understand why, uh, but it did. I realized that I really was drawn to this particular endeavor. So eventually I decided that this must be real, that I must really want to do this. And in order to do so, I needed to go back to college. So I went back to college when I was 36 years old and finished my degree in painting at 38. In the early stages of my painting for years, I did what I referred to as, uh, it was part of my search for uh, an identity, you might say, or a, a means by which to express myself a little bit different than everybody else. At the time I got back into art, there were several movements going on, of which one of them was expressionism in a current sense, not necessarily in the old sense. Um, and I tried to become a little bit of an expressionist, but I put a little bend on it. I made paintings that I referred to as an absurd expressionist. And the meaning of that was is that in order to distinguish the purpose of art, in my viewpoint, uh, or one of the purposes of art was to point out things that people might sometimes have trouble paying attention to for the purpose of making change. Um, now that's just one of the ideas that I had, one of many. And so along those lines, I pursued this absurd expressionism by capturing ideas or moments or examples or events of things that happened in humanity, that humanity decided for one reason or the other that they didn't want to spend too much time concentrating on. So these things were looked upon quickly and then moved through the system and then we try to put a positive spin on it all again. I work in big sizes, always have for some reason. Uh, I don't know why, but I always tackle these big paintings. Uh, I seem to like them better and they seem to be more comfortable to me than smaller pieces. I got criticized in the mid to late 80s um, by various contemporaries and uh, educators for using a lot of color, too much color. Uh, I use this color uh, in a very um, thick way in order, and, and I'm more of a figurative, figurative painter than I am an abstract painter, pretty much all the time. I, my background, a lot of the imagery inside of the paintings are scumbled and abstract in nature, but only in a, only in a figurative kind of way. But I made these large paintings whereby generally I always had some example of a narrative. Jim Jones, one of my early paintings, for example, was a four um, a quadruple piece of art that was about Jim Jones and the suicides. And it was a large painting about Jim Jones, who subsequently took his family to Guana, and they all, of course, committed mass suicide. At the time, for those years that I made these paintings, those were the kinds of things that I was always trying to resolve or put out in front of people so that they could see the tremendous absurdity in humanity. I mean, there was a time, for example, where um, uh, it, it was, became popular in America several years after that to throw midgets, to throw little people around in bars. And I always thought that was so, I, so I painted a big painting that was called Midget Pitching endless pictures. For the first Gulf War, I painted a picture called Backyard Barbecue, which was about the way that America was reacting to the war while the troops were over fighting and dying for this country. We were all in the backyard having a barbecue and enjoying our uh, opera and our, our music and TV and fine restaurants. So I have about 15 or 20 years of paintings along those lines. I don't think they're as political as they are uh, comprehensive of all of those things that fall outside of what I think to be justified humanity, meaning a, a kind of humanity that pays attention not only to the entire politics of the social order, but also to the individual idea of a, of a social order, what, what it is to be a human being all the way from that single 
concept to being a part of a social structure. As I came to this business much older than most people, I had not ever had the informative years to grow up in the city and actually be established or even familiar with the people in the art world. So from a good, I never was included, you might say, in, a, in the traditional sense, meaning that I painted paintings, uh, they wouldn't probably, the, the, the critics, the galleries, all of the people in town didn't ever indicate any interest in showing the work or being a part of the work. It affected me only from the sense that I've never been able to really resolve what it is about those that are in and those that are out, it's especially in the art world. But there seems to be that reality about it, and I'm sure that's true with all of life. It did affect me, but not in a way other than I decided to create what I refer to as sort of a fuck you attitude. And it was beneficial to me because it allowed me to continue to pursue art in a more extreme way than I think the general people do. Well, stronger, yes, but I tell you what we did as well. Because of this outsider, one of the things that I did that affected me for about eight or ten years is that I had one year in 1989 or so, I had a, a friend of mine had won the Jewish League Community Show. And the next year, I had won or had a significant showing in the show. We met and he was a fellow from Austin and I created a relationship with him which he subsequently introduced me to another man in Austin that had paintings and was also a bit of a an outsider an older guy that had been a little on the outside we then developed a group called Rubber an art mob and we then began to include people and build these exhibition uh, strategies we call them where our idea was to take and include all kinds of different performance pieces in with our exhibitions and put on rock bands and concerts and really exemplify um, the whole totality of, of what we thought art was. As far back as when I was a kid growing up, I always hated this idea of authority. I never liked it much. So I always had an inclination to be to do what I wanted to do. Now, I say that because um, um, that affected my willingness to take chances and uh, to take risk, to go out. Uh, that, that fire burned all the way through my career. I've never been without that. Um, we, one of these performances we put on early in our career as a group when we would, and, and another thing about these performances you need to understand is that our opinion was that sometimes when you went to art exhibitions that when you watched the public engage the art on the walls, most of the time they didn't stay there very long and they didn't pay attention to the paintings very long and if they did, before you know it, they were talking to one another and they weren't really engaging the art. One of the reasons we decided to put performances and take uh, these risks with having other venues in there was to keep the people around the art longer, to participate in the art longer uh, as, a, as, a, as in a, a total experience. So that's why, but one, early in this career, we invited a filmmaker, a fellow that had been nominated for the Academy Award in 2000. His name was Ramsey Telly. Uh, he was na nominated for the wildest show in the South, the Angola Prison Rodeo. And when Bill and I took Ramsey in to the rubber group, that's when we really started taking off. And we, we did all kinds of really bizarre performances. We did, uh, um, at one time we had a uh, uh, S&M uh, sadomasochism uh, show go on inside of the exhibition as these paintings were going on just to see how the see how the whole thing would react with regards to the people that came um, as the years went on by excuse me that was in 86 or 7 but the same thing in 2000 we finally culminated rubber with a live bullfight in the art gallery where we had a Portuguese matador fight a bull a series of bulls, whereby at the end of the show, for example, we took a cowboy from Oklahoma City and we bubble wrapped him with a thick 
coating of bubble wrap and hung him from the ceiling off a rope and made a human pinata out of him. And the bulls ran through the ring, hitting him and knocking him upside down, etc. So you might say, well, what does that have to do with art? Well, our position is, why wouldn't it have something to do with art? Who's defining art?